the old school is there should only be one shadow. How do you feel about multiple shadows? I would suggest actually to go to the museums and see all the, all the paintings and see if there's double shadows there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And since the painters didn't put double shadows in, which existed in those days also, I'm very happy not to have double shadows. I'm definitely old school. One sh you're one, uh, one, one shadow guy? One shadow, yes. The problem with double shadows is that it's distracting. Yeah. And it, it may be reality. There may be times when you have double shadows, but you should avoid it if you can in, in shooting a movie mm -hmm. uh, or doing a still photograph. We, we, we lost that, uh, what we learned actually well, from the past, a uh, newer generation of f filmmakers, film students, they start out using soft light. And they're in love with that. And I hate that kind of an approach for <laughs> lighting because it's, it's not lighting, it's lighting for exposure. I usually try to uh, make uh, dramatic uh, lighting for a scene but which has to be dramatic. I mean, if you, you shoot a comedy, maybe you can get away with it by just using this ugly, soft lighting thing, you know. <laughs> I, I, but I would not do that. There's no reason for the comedy to be high key or something like that. There's no reason. Because in reality, you have a lot of, lot of s s scenes in real life which is dramatically lit. The sun is a dramatic lighting because you have you have the sunlight and dark shadows. In fact, you have to bring up a little bit the shadows so it's not, doesn't get too contrasty for the daylight scene. So that's what bothers me, that the, the younger generation doesn't start learning lighting from the past. Mm -hmm. But we, we actually learned for 50 years. So that, that's my opinion about mm -hmm. soft lighting. Well, you're a little hard on soft lighting, I can <laughs> say that way. <laughs> The problem I have with hard light is that if you don't soften it even a tiny bit, it just doesn't look real. So you might just put an opal in front of a 10K or something, but it takes the edge off of that funny shadow that's made by the Fresnel lens, which is an ingenious invention. But I think it needs to be softened, unless you're doing some film noir or uh, the artist, then you use hard light. But otherwise, soften it a little bit so that it looks more real. Oops, here comes uh, the emotion. <laughs> Just a question, Jimmy. Have you heard about the words fill light? <laughs> 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 the fill light is the one which is softens, actually, the light of the hard light. And you can use more fill light or less fill light, and you control the contrast. That's the way I used to do that. Ah, thank you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> The topic of Fresnel versus Pars. Yeah. You, you asked the right man for this, right? <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> yes. I am much. a cinematographer who loves, who, love, who loves actually work with the directional lighting, you know, Fresnel lights, because I can always diffuse the Fresnel, light, Fresnel lights to, to make it soft light, but uh, you cannot do it the other way around. And uh, the way I light, I, 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 I first I I want to light actually the story itself, the, the, the actors. I can always uh, cut the light off of places where I don't want the light to go. That's why I, I have a hard time to really control those lights because they're very soft, they reach too far. If I'm in a set, you know, it's white walls, forget it. I can only light it with directional light because otherwise the background is going to be dominating mm -hmm. against the lights that I'm using for the people. So that's, that, because of that, I, I'm trying to learn how to light with fluorescent lights. <laughs> I always fail. <laughs> I just can't do it. Yes, if I have a, a, a post about, about something, a vertical thing, I can hide fluorescent lights. Great. I use it all the time because I cannot hide directional lights behind places, you know. But beyond that... And you like the on. quality of, of the Fresnel, eh? Well, you know, I can... I, I can I can soften up, you know, I can, I can do everything with it, basically. Yeah, but you like starting with that, that, that hard yes, yeah. I like to start with, with that, that directional hard Because sometimes I need that harshness. Mm -hmm. and I, like, I like Fresnel's for the same reason that Vilmos uh, alluded to. Another thing, I, I always think of the cost of what we're ordering. And so I like to order lights that do more than one thing. And so with a Fresnel light, 
You can be directional or you can bounce it. But if you have separate lights for all these different chores, then you've got a lot more equipment that isn't really necessary. But I like to order things that do more than one, one job. Moti. Now, Michel, I think you're a par, a par guy. No, it's, you know, it's always depend of the movie. Yeah, yeah of course. You know, sorry, yeah. Uh, par I'm guy. Joking. If you work with a very uh, fast director, and he's the guy who wants to do a lot, a lot of different shots every day, mm. You you have you you need big sauces and quite quite powerful. What you like about the par is that you can go fast. Is what, what you're saying? It's a powerful mm -hmm. and you can, you can put the sauce very far away. Mm -hmm. It's comfortable uh, sometimes, very comfortable. Mm -hmm. But I'm okay with uh, Wilmot. You know, it's it's so strong. Sometimes it's uh, it's just crazy. And uh, you know, all the tools are useful for uh, for some different movies. Yeah. Uh, action movie, when you have to walk uh, fast, I, I find that it's a nice way. Yes. Pierre Morel, yes. <laughs> he, he was a DOP, and, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, you have no excuse with a guy, who, <laughs> when the guy was a DOP, uh, you, 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 can, you can tell him stories about the uh, problem of flight. And, you, know, you, you, you're naked, you're completely naked. Yeah. And this is the, 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 the sea of nightmare for DP to walk with DP. If I'm using a par light, I think the main advantage advantage of it is if you want a light with a lot of punch because obviously in the reflector design of the lamp um, we've got a light here that's designed to push it and you know being very efficient with the um, distribution of the light so I'd use a par lamp for instance if we're using a bounce um, you know that would be sort of my choice the thing you have with a par light is you've got a box of lenses with you, and that's another thing that you've got to carry around with you. You know, you're not only carrying this lamp, there's a box of lenses. I see that as a bit of a disadvantage for me um, personally. Um, a Fresnel light, the great thing about that is, is that you have the ability to spot and flood um, the light. So, you know, if you're going direct with a source and going through a window, you've got a great ability here that if you just want a little bit more, you can spot the light and you can flood it. If you're going direct with the source, I think the Fresnel is always, the, for me, the best source to use. Um, moving it along as well with the modern technology, we now have the um, new reflector designs in the PAR lamps now. So we have the, I think, is it the K56, the 1600 unit has a new reflector design, so we'd, we'd, you can use this without the lenses. And also the new Arimaxes, so we've got the, um, the 18K Arimax, and I think there's the M40, this series of lamps. Great thing about this is you've got a par lamp with the output, but you're not having to use the lenses because of the new technology on the reflector design. Um, you know, the 18Ks, you know, they just, you know, there's so much punch out of these lights. Yeah. If you want a sort of very hard, sort of sunny sort of things, they're a great light to use um, direct, you know. Yeah. From my point of view, it's logistics, really. As Ruben was saying, that you have a lens box and you have a ballast. And, yeah. and also, the basic the tungsten lamp is, is so basic that you can fix it in field. With the advent of electronics, and you, you have to send that back to the, to the yard. And if you're miles away from your service, uh, the service company, you know, that's part of the, th the thought process. Yeah.